Kuda Malloy here coming at you with another exciting video. If you've been following along, you saw me go through what what the test mode looks like when it's like in the middle or towards the end of the test mode and the error code that popped up in the first of this three part series, maybe four parts tomorrow if I decide to do another one on the whole like six to 10 minute process, but it's a long process. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you specifically how to get into just cut to the chase and go straight to where the error codes are. Because a lot of times when you call KitchenAid, right? KitchenAid or Whirlpool, it's all the same. It's just basically built by the same company, different branding. So this is a double gas oven with a gas range. When you call customer service and they ask you for your model number, serial number, what you do is face the oven towards like the left-hand side. There's a little pull-up tab. Boom, that's where it is. That's your model number, serial number in there. That'll tell KitchenAid when the oven was made and when it was manufactured. It doesn't have to necessarily be when you bought it, but it kind of gives you a, a sense of the warranty. I believe there's, in most cases with these ovens, there's usually like a one-year warranty. And then there's like a five, that's everything. And then there's a five-year addition to that for just parts only, like if the parts break or whatever. You might have to check with your specific situation. This is August 2023. This oven's pretty old. It's about six or seven years old. Not pretty old, but old. But anyways, you get the idea. So that's what the warranty was like at that time. It was one year. Anyways, error codes. How do you get cut to the chase? You don't want to do any testing, diagnostic. You just want to see if there's any error codes. The way you do that is you go as if you were going to go into the testing mode, which if you saw video two in this series, I went into that. But what you do is off, off, start, then push number three, then push number three again. Right now you're in like a hidden menu. Push number three again. There's your engineering mode. There's your test mode. So you would, you would push start and go through that if you wanted to go through the test mode. But we want to get to the error codes. So faults, that's what it's called, faults. So you push start, push number three, and there are no faults. In my case, I did have a fault. I forgot the S number or whatever. That's what was in video number one in this series. So if you go back to my video playlist, you'll see that. But the fault that I had was that one of these keys had gotten stuck. Very common problem. Typically, like in my case, what I do is I get a, I get a paper towel, right? Moisten it or dampen it. And then I just wipe the face of the display over here to clean it. I mean, obviously you have to clean it. There has to be some way to clean it. So I think what happened was, is when I, when I wiped it with a moist towel or whatever, I think what happened was, is I, I hit like four or five buttons all at the same time, I think is what happened. And that probably happened like a few times. So the way, the way that I, at the time, the way that I had gotten the, the oven to work again was I just push off, off, start, off, off, start like twice in a row. And that, that clears the display or whatever's on there temporarily so that you can use the stove top you can use the ovens or whatever right whirlpool kitchen you get the idea so if there was an error code here what it'll do is it'll tell you what the error code is it's like a number it's like four digits three digits it'll say like in red it'll say like f238 or whatever it is and then it'll tell you how to address the problem like in my case it said check wiring harness bus something like that so that's something I'm going to tell to my repair technician when they come out. I do have to call a repair technician, unfortunately, because my in my specific situation, this is another problem I think that I had was that the, I believe it's the igniter is not doing its job correctly. Like there's, it just needs to be replaced. The oven, the lower oven will not go above 200, 210 degrees. Like if I set that to 350 to preheat, it only goes up to 200, 210 Fahrenheit. So a repair technician is going to have to come out and probably replace that part. That's not something I feel comfortable doing, especially when you're dealing with gas. I don't want any, any part of it. I'd just rather have a trained repair technician come out and do it. But to each their own. Warning, warning, warning. You're responsible for your own decisions. You get the idea. Okay, so if you had to clear the code, what it's going to say is it'll tell you how to clear the code. I believe in this case it was... Uh, push delay start and that's what cleared the first code then it then it says like push number three to go to the next code you do that and then you push delay start if you want to clear that code before you clear any codes take pictures like i took plenty of pictures of what the what the code what the error code was or the fault or whatever and then 
I guess I should have left him up for the technician, but sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you happen to know more or you have more knowledge than certain people do. Just I'll just leave it at that. Anyways, to get out of this now, right now that you're here, you can either just push off, right? And then it'll say, please check if the cooktop knobs are in the off position. Then it says press cancel or start if off. So what they're basically telling you is that the, the gas valve, the valve that allows the gas to come into the oven, like the stovetop and the oven, is currently off right now while you're doing all this testing and diagnostics and error code finding and whatever faults. What they want to do is they want to make sure that before they open up that valve, they want to make sure that everything's off. So check your knobs and make sure everything's off. Because sometimes you're leaning against the oven, you press up against this and you can actually turn it on by accident, right? So make sure everything's off. And then go ahead and push either start or off. So I'm gonna push start in this case. You heard that click. That click is the valve opening up again to allow the gas to come back into the oven and the stovetop. So there you go. Anyways, video is way too long. So this is part three in a three part series. Stay tuned tomorrow morning when the oven cools down. I'll probably try to do another uh, full video of the whole test process because it does take a while. It's like six to 10 minutes. If you want to see what a taste of that looks like, go back to video number one in this series. Go back into the playlist or just go back, you know, to the first video in the series, two videos back, three videos back, whatever, and you'll see that. Anyways, have a good night. Hit the thumbs up button if you like what you're seeing. Hit the subscribe button. Check out the description section if you want to check out some cool products. And hit the comment section if you have any comments or questions or whatever. Like I said, make sure you watch all three videos <laughs> that we can get a sense of what the test looks like when it's in mid test, what, what error code popped up in my case. I actually had two more that were before that, that I didn't get a chance to record. But then what you also see is you'll see how to go into the statistics display, let's say to find out, you know, how long the oven has been on for, how many times you went through the bake cycle, whatever that stuff. I usually try to leave as is. I try not to clear it out. And then this video covered how to go to the faults or the error codes. And then basically I talked about how to clear them. Anyways, you get the idea. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, wherever that is. Catch you on the next video. Make sure to go to the description section too. Check out some those cool products that I posted.